Hi, I was working on this camera tracker and it works quite well so I might as well share how I did this. I guess let's start with mechanical stuff because that's quite, well, it's not really that in interesting but well, what I have done basically is I mm. borrowed motor from my lathe because I was lazy to order one. Uh, it's not very visible here but it's there mm. and then I basically put some piece of tubing on the shaft which is not even really necessary and this basically this will rotate this big this big circle very slightly there are some retaining stuff because this is this is piece of rubber which is used from first aid kit because I was too lazy to order anything else in fact, this is truly from first aid kit from my car, so I hope that I, my arteries won't get cut. Now I made this from wood, and first I have some offcuts, so I use this, and I did not even plan on doing this like properly, quote unquote, and I did not even expect that I would make it work so well. But anyway, so yeah, it's just glued together, I think, with hot nut glue. Really, I know. No facts, were, no facts were given during the construction. First I started using this with just this rotating platform and there wasn't anything above it. And the receiver was put, was like, I placed it directly onto here. Because idea was that I was getting quite good range with my old receiver and I just felt a little bit limited with how or where I can fly, so I wanted to just rotate it to correct position basically and that worked very well when I was holding this thing in hand so I was using this receiver, I hacked in video output and I was and I had this like here and this thing rotated and there was obviously some directional antenna here which I don't use right now now when you do this hack the video output will be, it would be a little bit attenuated, so colors would be a little bit desaturated, I would say, probably. And maybe also a bit darkened. But that's not the point. Also, what's not the point is that come November, for some reason, I'm not entirely sure to up to this point in time, why my video range was suddenly totally crap. So when I was flying in July with this thing I was again holding this manually near to my transmitter and that's how I flew. So I got like 5 kilometers range but suddenly with the same receiver, same transmitter I got like, I don't know, I got like kilometer range and even that very crappy. So I was like what the Fuck. So I thought I will step up my game a little bit, so I bought this antenna, it's like 16 decibel so or something like that, very directional, it should be very long range and I have attached this big arm here and there is servo with link it's not very good mechanical connection but it works so basically it will, it will also point to correct angle in uh, like vertically so really this small servo is pretty good enough and just some voltage regulator here and yeah maybe what should what should I point out is this cable allows this whole thing to rotate 180 degrees one way and 180 degrees other way so there isn't any dead zone, but as soon as you cross this point, like with your plane or vehicle, then it has to go around, so it has to like do this. Which is not so terrible, but yeah, it has to do that. And as far as the receiver, I used some Chinese stuff that I was able to get, and not sure if it's good or bad. This thing should be able to handle this antenna fairly well so if you set it that like this it will stay like that the 
server really don't have any problem moving it. It is a little bit wobbly, but it shouldn't cause any problems really. So this is basic four-phase stepper motor driver. Windings are in series, so it's very simple. Just four MOSFETs and some flatback diodes. And I'm able to drive this directly by Arduino, which is here. And yeah, so these four are motors, and this one is power. <laughs> anyway, and this one wire down there is for servo, so that's really all to it. Nothing special, really. Then there is motor, of course, and here is uh, some LiPo, 3S battery. And yeah, that's about it. I'm using Arduino here and I'm using a laptop with this thing, so I'm communicating with Arduino through serial, through USB. So Raspberry Pi would make this more standalone unit, but basically I'm testing this really for a very long time. But yeah, Raspberry Pi should be fine. Maybe there could be problems with performance, maybe because the way the code works is basically it's asynchronous motor driver and by that I mean that it is looping over time and it is remembering where the where the motor is and where the servo is and it is slowly incrementing where it should go so this provides constant speed and I can drive both motors and servo uh, at the same time at least it looks like it, it is done at the same time now my problem currently is that I can't really tell how much the distance or range improved and how much easier is it for me to fly because as I said I bought this antenna but what I forgot to mention probably was that my current range is still shit it's like one kilometer still and I mean funny thing is that I get really just random range, really. So sometimes I get like two kilometers, and once I it was very cold, so I flew for about one kilometer. Then it started to get very shitty, and as I came back, I was probably 250 meters uh, like away, and the signal was still shit, and I was using this antenna. So go figure. Fucking hell, this is really insane. Now another thing that I wanted to mention is how I'm using this receiver. I basically have a video cable coaxial and it's going through here and it's going out, 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 looping and here I have magnet and this is because normally I have this thing on roof of my car and I'm using this magnet to stick it to metal work basically and so my cables is rooted and it's not everywhere and then the wire is fed into this monitor like so this monitor is full HD it was quite expensive but the quality of image is very good what I saw other people do is they get like another transmitter ideally like 5 millivolts or something like that and they put uh, antenna that is reverse polarized like this is, these are all circularly polarized antennas so I'm using right of course and for this I would use left but still then you would connect basically video feed from uh, this receiver to this transmitter and that way you can use like another transmitter and manipulate it wirelessly so this would be maybe this could be like uh, integrated into this thing and it would be even more standalone but what I found is that if I feed video from this receiver to this transmitter and then again here it's shit like it's not good and I really like the quality of this display and I did not really felt like I would sacrifice the video quality overall.
Now as you can see it's quite cold outside and it is not very fun to do much testing. Ok, let's do demo. Now there is particular sequence to the setup and I get it always wrong, so bear with me. First of all this thing expects to be pointed at north and don't mind this marking, it's reverse. So because I change cabling, so it is expected to start like this. There is none. And yeah, that's prerequisite for this basically. It's hard coded in the code. Hence, hard coded. Uh, anyway, I now fly this stuff, which is Dragon Link. It's 900 megahertz radio. So. I basically, I have a relay here, so I have relay to from 2.4 GHz receiver, which I am I'm using this cheap radio, but I had it, so I can test it with this relay. I am always testing this. So yeah. So I totally forgot one thing, and that's, you may ask, how does this thing know where to rotate or when to, where to point? And well, so this radio has telemetry modem and there is Wi-Fi module and so I connect to this Wi-Fi module with a PC and hence why you would like to use Raspberry Pi on this tracker, maybe. So... Oh hey, I am running this app already. So I will just wait until I connect to the telemetry. I'm connected, and then I then I can start this tracker. Maybe cannot connect to motor driver. Okay. So I need to connect this PC to the tracker. And there is startup sequence even for the for the servo. Yeah, okay, I forgot to connect this power. And there is startup sequence for the servo too. You are expected to have it in position high because because it is servo it moves instantly when you give it some commands to move to some position and that's why the drive is done asynchronously basically. So now I connected the cable and it will level. Because no I disconnected the cable because if I would do this otherwise it would do this. And imagine some bigger antenna on the thing. Uh, that's not very great. So right now when I connect it to the thing so I can start tracker and I start also, this is not required, Q ground control and have this on two screens. So you can see some debug messages that come from telemetry. It's basically from this antenna to this module with through Wi-Fi to this thing, through USB to this tracker. It's very simple, isn't it? This quote-unquote application is using Python and let me see if I can open it and it's not even important the code itself but the thing is Mavlink. Mavlink is very interesting stuff and for some reason it uses quite a lot of CPU power when it runs. Uh, looks like one thread fully occupied. And this is because there is a wait loop, it's not a synchronously driven thing. And yeah, I don't know what it does. It's uh, the whole Mavling library is well you may say well documented if you are sadist. So yeah. Now since we are inside, the way how I debugged this basically was that there is one point here and it gets reset, so now it's here and it's very unstable because as I said, we are inside 
So the problem is that I cannot really move the plane around and expect this thing to follow me. It would work on like range of meters or something like that, but not on centimeters or like tens of meters would be what I should expect. So again, I'm not going outside, it's cold. So I'm basically relying on the fact that this thing gets reset and there is some noise to get relatively... to get some some offset from the home position and this way I can I can just look at this thing and this thing and see if it like matches basically and it does look like it does now I can try hide because this is done by barometer so I can lift this plane up and it goes up, put it down, and it goes down. Until home point resets and this whole thing is shit, right? But I, could, I couldn't really arm this because... Now I think as it goes to south it's very not great because there is the point where it has to turn 100 and or yeah, 180 degrees around, so that's not very great. Or maybe 360? Yeah, it's 360 degrees, it has to do 360 degrees. But you can see how quick it turns and stuff like that. Okay, now I can arm this, so I'll arm and now I should be able to test height, really. It wouldn't be accurate because distance to me is not accurate, but you can see that it follows the plane basically. Well, there is one relatively big issue that I haven't really tried to resolve and that is the, when I lose connection with the plane it could happen because, I don't know, USB cable gets like popped out and I have to restart the tracker then it doesn't get the home position again or I guess this isn't really a big problem, right? because it does remember it Wait. Ah, I see. Anyway, so yeah, the problem is that when you lose connection to the tracker, it does not get home position sent, even though in Python I do remember it. So I maybe should send home position along with each coordinate where the plane is. That way I can guarantee that the home position is always refreshed, quote-unquote. Yeah, so that should work, that's easy change. And of course, link to the repository for this tracker will be in the description, and the source code should be self-explanatory. The Arduino may not be as optimized as I would like to be, and the Python, it's a mystery there. There are libraries, there are, because you have to calculate basically stuff like geometry between two points on the Earth. And would you know it? Earth is round and that complicates things. Well, so yeah, that should be all documented as well as possible. I basically use like, I type in Google, blah 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 blah, blah stack overflow, yeah, copy paste, done. So yeah, that's how things get done. So I hope this wasn't too complicated, especially I guess for beginners, because I, when I go flying I basically have to pack all this thing and then on the field I have to deploy. And this could be simplified much, much, much more and even like, even the tracker could be like made much even smaller because it's quite tall right now unnecessarily. 
what I used to have is just a piece of wood with like with like stuff and this was like so and I and I flew like this for quite a long time so that's not really a big problem and I can do that but again during winter it would be challenging okay again that's all I have for you right now and see you next time